So what is happening to Tn and Sn for the infinite geometric series? So that only works when the r value is less than 1 or the absolute value of r is less than 1. So for the infinite series to converge, this needs to be, we need to have this r value less than 1. So the Tn, if we graph the Tn, if the r is less than 1, every term is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's going to get smaller exponentially. And eventually it's going to approach zero. And this is a necessary criteria for the sum to have a finite sum. So if this is the case, it is possible for the, the infinite series to have a finite sum. Okay, so for a geometric series, if this does go to zero, all geometric series will converge. And it will converge to that sum. Now this only is true for geometric series, but the criteria that Tn must go to zero is true for all series. So as we, maybe I'll just draw it a little bit differently here. So if, as I increase the number of terms, I'm adding less and less, but it's getting closer and closer to that, that finite sum. So this is what's going to be happening in an infinite geometric series. The Tn decreases exponentially to zero, and then since an infinite geometric series has a finite sum or is convergent, it will converge to this s value. So this is a very important point. So what criteria is necessary for Tn for the infinite sum to converge? Tn must go to zero. So the limit as n goes to infinity of Tn, it must approach zero. Okay, this is not the only criteria, but for any infinite sum to converge, the Tn must go to zero. So this is a key idea. So what's in, what is important to note, though, is that if it is, in fact, geometric, this is good enough. If it's not geometric, that's not necessarily the case. So that we had that harmonic series, which did not converge, even though Tn went to zero. So we have to be careful with that. So here we have a sequence. It goes 2, 9, 16, so it looks like it went plus 7, plus 7. So this looks like a arithmetic sequence. So that's the first thing. We need to establish what type of sequence it is. So this is a this is a geometric, sorry, an arithmetic sequence. So Tn is an arithmetic sequence. Okay, if I divide oops, sequence, if I divide consecutive terms, I don't get a common, I don't get the same ratio. But if I subtract consecutive terms, I get the same difference. So this is arithmetic. So we want to figure out the number of terms in this sequence. Well, I could do this algebraically by doing this. Tn is equal to 695. That's the nth term. And we know we get there by starting at 2, and we use the number of steps and the difference of plus 7. Okay, so if I subtract this, I get 693 is equal to n minus 1 over 7. Well, I can divide out the steps of 7. This is going to end up being n minus 1 is equal to 99. Okay, so there's 99 steps. n minus 1 represents the number of steps from the first term to the last term. That means the last term must be term number 100. So this is arithmetic sequence, and the number of terms in this sequence is 100. For this one here, we need, again, we need to establish the type of sequence. If I subtract, I get 4. I subtract, I get 12. The difference is not common. But if I divide, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 18 divided by 6 is also 3, we have a common ratio. So if I want to, I want to first of all establish that this is a geometric sequence. Okay, so that's the first thing. The number of terms in this sequence, well, I could try the same thing. So I can say that Tn, we don't know n is equal to 486 
that's equal to I start at 2 my multiplier is going to be 3 and I need to figure out how often I use that multiplier 3 from starting at 1 the n minus 1 represents the number of terms or number of times I use that multiplier I'm going to divide both sides by 2 so I get 243 is equal to 3 to the power n minus 1 now this is a little bit difficult because we have to kind of guess at this but if we guess that this is a base 3 number and we can guess that this is going to end up being 3 to the power 5 okay so this is from here to here we kind of have to guess this this step but because we have base 3 on this side for it to work out nicely it has to be base 3 on this side so we can just test multiplication by 3 so once we get this we can say that well the number of times we used the multiplier was five times so the n value must be six when I solve for n so it's a geometric sequence and the number of terms in this sequence is equal to six and we again if we're not sure we can just test it go two and then you times uh, so times by three six times you'll end up at 486.